Hello and welcome to Gwent. This is a special episode dedicated to counters and hard counters that I believe need to be talked about at least a little bit. The first agenda is uh, Scorch and uh, burn like other burn line effects that uh, burn down units, multiple units that have uh, the same stats. Technically, Scorch for example can affect uh, both sides of the board, but of course uh, those who include it, like uh, Villain Threat and Merit or Scorch, uh, those decks tend to run low units. and. Uh, Scorch itself uh, basically hard counters any buffing strategy. For example, if you just play Scorch against a, a knight, for example, and you have Guardian Knight, it's it's okay-ish already. You you burn down 11 strength. But if that uh, Neo Guardian Knight gets buffed up by, or your opponent plays two Neo Guardian Knights, then you burn down 22, and that's already a two for one. And that could be just uh, the way to win the game. Or you your opponent plays a Neo Guardian Knight and plays a an ambassador with it, that's uh, that becomes a 23 and also gives away the of Guardian uh, ambassador. That's a 25 point swing, so your Scorch did 25 points. Pretty ridiculous, I might say. And of course, uh, if these get buffed and more, like, like they could, uh, then it just becomes bigger and bigger. And if you're just burn, it's just three for one your opponent or four for one your opponent. There's just no coming back from that. It is just Never gonna happen. And uh, I just feel like the 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 scorch like effects are too strong for two reasons. First of all, they burn down units, and that makes it very hard, especially for the new Neo God faction, because you play two of two of these knights, you perhaps lose the game. You try to play these Imperial enforcers, and they get uh, get buffed at the same time. They get burned at the same time. Same with Imperial Brigades, and uh, these these spotters are in the toughest spot. Not Emir is a complete garbage. Don't don't get me wrong, it needs a it needs a buffs unfortunately, but these spotters are even uh, in a worse spot uh, than him because they they gain one strength for each revealed card, but and they all have the same strength. So by the end of the game, you might have three spotters drop all of them. But they're all worthless because they all get burned down by the same silver card. And the same silver burns down like 60 points of strength. And uh, that is just complete. That makes them completely worthless. <clears throat> and uh, that is kind of a problem. So, hard counter effects such as Sword, Scorch, and uh, Geralting, and Villain Threat and Bear burning down units. I believe that's too strong. And how, how they work is, is a bit too strong as well. Because as long as they work this way. There will be never a buffer, buffing strategy, unless there is some kind of a, I don't know, way to protect your guys. But the thing is, for example, this is a good example, Alba Spearman. This unit has a shield, but shield doesn't protect against uh, burning. It's not a strength removing effect, it's a hard removal. And it might seem good to have a hard removal in your game, and I would agree. Hard removals are good, sparingly, but I believe those... Those hard removers, Scorch and Igni and Villain Threat and Mart are just uh, too good. And uh, sometimes not too good. Not not against all decks, but they will always keep down any buffing strategy. Because as long as you like buff up something too. As long as something is like, you can even burn down a knight, that's great. But if you, something goes up to like 15, that's amazing. But if you go with any buffing strategy, they're just gonna burn it to bits. And no buffing strategy will ever be viable as long as these cards remain the way they are. And of course, uh, there are ways to make sure that uh, that uh, the units have the same uh, strength. So, for example, you just trim, trim the top of them with uh, uh, Myrta Brachy. That's a good way to make sure that they all burn. And your opponent might not have any answer to that, because you're just like, okay, that, that's all I can do, there's nothing I can do, you're gonna burn down like 30 strength. And uh, that is just a game-losing moment right there. And, uh, of course, I just see. I, I'm gonna sh point at one very, very good example. Uh, not neutral, all faction. Of a counter, and this is a great example. So, a basic bronze unit have, have the strength of about 8 points. But this Doblat and a Marksman have 7 strength, which is... Very respectable its own, and Agile, which worth about one point. 
roughly. Depends on who you're up against. Sometimes it may not worth any, but it could worth a lot. And it removes 5 strength from an opposing non-god unit with a strength of 10 or more. So technically this is a 12 point bronze card. Very, very powerful. That is agile. Now this is a... I wouldn't even... Well, we can call it a soft counter if we could say that, but it's basically at least 50% stronger than a basic uh, a bronze unit, as long as it's used in the right situation. So this is a great example of a soft counter that can be as as uh, a bronze and what can be a, a hard counter is assassination currently this card is complete garbage no one uses it but uh, the the idea behind it is solid destroy one non gold unit i believe it should be just a unit even golds so it would uh, counter the villain threat and Marchese too, and remove an amount equal to this unit strength from random no good unit on your side. So if your opponent is really about buffing buffing big guys up, you could go with assassination, and uh, this this could be a I guess this could be really be a thing. So this is a hard counter for for a big price of a gold card. Perhaps needs to be stronger, but why would you run it when you can just course down like 40, 40 strength worth of guys? No point. As long as you run a low deck. And I, I just feel like everyone is forced to run a low deck. And that is incredibly awkward, especially in Neil of Guard. Where you just... Uh, where you just have these guys that buff up. Like, this one gives one of your guys 12 strength. I mean, like... As long as burning effects are in the game... This guy just sets you up for a 2 for every time. This guys, these guys are completely worthless. They have the same strength, they get buffed up at the same time, they have the same strength, they get burned at the same time. Uh, actually, they are kind of better against the Geralt Igni, because you can actually place them on the on different rows. But if you're up against the Villain Threatenmert or a Scorch, rest in peace, you're gonna die. And uh, this is just... We're just getting started. This buffs up again, but that's not important. Imperial Brigade, of course you can may play it with... Uh, you can play one and play a spy and pay, play play one after that, so they don't have the same strength. They gain free strength per, per spy, but that doesn't matter because these guys are all about playing a lot of spies and dropping them on the board. And you got like 20 strength worth of guys, and uh, you might not even help, can do anything about it. And you play two of them, and they just get burned at the same time. Again, big thing. Again, another buffer. Gain four strength whenever. Either player use a leader card. Not viable again. For two reasons actually. I will bring up the second point. I will yeah. Mainly because it's a buffer. So it's either gets burned down and it's a range row, and that's that's also fairly bad to be on currently. Because uh, monsters love spamming fog. But that's not really a point. Also we have uh Salak here as well, gains six strength whenever Either player uses a leader card. So these huge buffers are just not viable as long as Scorch burns two or burns every single instance of a unit on the same strength. Actually, especially these spotters suck. And uh, and I just feel like they are just too strong of a counters. That's my take on them. And uh, with that with that said, this. Uh, this range rule comment, I like to touch on the second point. And, uh, well, b before I go there, I, 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 my, my point is that these, these uh, hard removal effects like Scorch and Geralt Igni and Villain Threat and Mert I just need to be tuned down or just buffing strategy will never be a thing. Like, in many other games, it's just never a thing, you know? You don't even want to buff up a guy like, you know, if you make it twice as strong, it just gets hard to move every single time. And in this game, you can kind of get really, really strong. That's basically what Neilfgaard is all about. But it will never work. Especially these spotters. Same strength, complete garbage. Anyway, let's go to Vedder. And the thing about Vedder is that... I know it's, it, it was nerfed. And probably doesn't need to be strongly touched on. But I do believe it needs one change. 
that just makes the game fairly awkward because what weather basically is that you play weather now the thing about weather and scorch and will and red bird that theoretically it affects both sides on the board but if you're playing it you're basically making sure that it doesn't affect you and now the thing about weather is that it basically wipes a row it kills a row unless your opponent answers it and there's a very good card to serve as an example for this so we got Vilga Force over here. I know it doesn't look like it ties the weather, but it very much does. It destroys a non gold unit. If it was on the opposing side, your opponent draws a card and reveals it. If it was on your side, draw a card and play a card. If your opponent has passed, you may only target a unit on your side. Now, that last bit, very important. That just make sure that the downside that your opponent draws a card and has the opponent opportunity to play the card always present so you're not just doing that that you're just gaining card advantage and dropping Vilga Force last and burning down a unit and just calling high five I just burned down a guy great job again this is a hard counter that kind of has a downside I don't really have a problem with Vilga Force because he's a hard counter with a downside so again much like assassination I think he's fine this is a more acceptable hard counter, actually. And uh, Austin, they should probably need some kind of tweak. But, uh, now, the point is, now, the point about the last, last row is that, now, the thing about Vedder is that, if your opponent plays Vedder, you want to have the option to free your guys. Because if you have, like, 40 points of uh, guys on the row, you want to play Curious Sky. It, and it usually becomes in a spam fest, like, he plays better, you play Curious Sky. He plays better, you play Curious Sky. It is kind of lame, and I believe Vedder probably needs some kind of a tweak in the future. I, I, I would like it if it was more of a preventive thing. It's not like, I play better here, now you can't use that row. Something like that. It might be just too, too lame, but it, it, sh it really shouldn't be just a hard counter you play, like, that wipes off the row. Because it's basically a hard counter, because if they have a guy, like... 20 point guys there and you play weather on the first row then they become one pointers so the opponent loses uh, 38 points and so he can never pass before as long as he has clear skies unless he has an answer to that he can never pass because if he passes then uh, then you're gonna play weather on him and that's it and he's not gonna have the ans the opportunity to answer it so the thing I see about Vedder, and as someone who who played Vedder decks a lot, is that just Vedder decks always go for card advantage and want to make sure that they have the last say. They want to make sure that your opponent is not gonna save himself from Vedder. They just want to play Vedder last, put your guys at one, and that's it. And they don't even have to have very strong guys about that. And that is my my point in it. I believe Vedder would need to change, that if your opponent has passed, Vedder can, Vedder cards can be used. At least on, on that turn. Of course, on that turn, of course. So, that's my thing. Instead of just uh, hoarding your Vedder cards for last, you gotta make sure that they are not worthless. That's my take on it. Because they really shouldn't be just hard removing, sh really shouldn't be about hard removing rows. And, uh, yeah. And the last, but not least, it's more of a minor concern, but I do believe it's it's very important in this topic still, is uh, ties to John Calvate. Well, not not only strong John Calvate, actually all all spies, but more, mostly John Calvate and uh, spy units. But it mostly ties to treason and uh, John Calvate's hero power. So the thing is, if you send in spies, they just give your opponent power and whatnot, you might have the option to get them back, your opponent might just attack them or just spend resources. If, if your opponent attacks them with a Mirta Brake, that's 100% fine. But uh, against Absorb Monsters, for example, they might choose to eat your guys. And uh, that basically breaks John Calvate's strategy. Instead of... Uh, he doesn't have an option to get back the spies because they're all eaten. All these suckers are gonna get eaten 
perhaps probably the big one's gonna get eaten as well. Cantoral and Joachim the Vet. And even if he tries to pull a Leto combo, it's probably gonna eat, he's probably gonna get eaten as well. If the Master Prey is any good and playing that particular absorb strategy. If not, he might not have that many counters, but you'll probably save uh, save some for the big ones. And uh, the Vrans will definitely take little guys. And this might seem okay, but 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 this basically means that John Calvate will never be a thing as long as Consume Monsters are an option. Because they can always hard counter him. They can always win basically every single time. And this is not... Again, we are back to hard counters. And uh, the way I see the change should be is that when you're using Monster Consumes on the board, I believe your, I believe your targets should be limited to faction units, alias monster, and neutral units, so whatever neutral units you put in your deck. And because spies are not, not from your faction, like I send in this, then he can eat that, then you won't be able to eat that. And you would play your own strategy, but you wouldn't ridiculously disrupt your opponent's strategy as well. And don't get me wrong, I love counterplay, but uh, it's not really a counterplay if you just get shot down right away. It's, it's too, too much of a hard counter. And I definitely want strong counters in this game, but if the monsters are just eating all your guys, it just doesn't work. So John Calvate will never work as long as, uh, as long as monster consumes are the way it is. And monster consumes is definitely a viable deck. Other decks, like for example Emir, is no hard counter to him. Just he's just kind of lame. Morven, no hard counter to him. He's just an okay guy. He's hero power, but there's a hard counter to John Calvate, and I believe the the developers need to really think about the hard counters. I believe they need to be in the game, but. Uh, they need to really consider their value and their worth and uh, and when should they be used and how should they be used because uh, they could disrupt some strategies because you just if you're playing Joe Cavate you see a consume masters GG you got me that's basically how it feels and if you're playing against a better deck for example you can just you can never pass before they pass if you have a clear sky in your hand because you're never gonna have the chance to save your guys from the from the weather. So you gotta play as long as the monster guy plays. Because and if he has the if he gains the card advantage over you by some means, he's just gonna play Ragnarok last and that's it. And that's kind of what you wanna avoid. That's the game boiling down to that point. It shouldn't be just about that, but uh, playing and but of course, weather is extremely potent, but as long as you have the option to counter it, it it's it's okay it kind of negates it in a way so yeah but if you don't have the opportunity to do that then okay then then they just completely screwed and you're just it just basic Ragnarok is just kill your whole board and uh, I'm not sure that is what better should be about but at very least your opponent should have the opportunity to answer it and uh, yeah that's it anyway Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, tell me what you think. So, see you around and have a good one.